What's up Repair Nation? In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to use an EEPROM programmer. Feel free to pause here to look over the functions of the device and get a better understanding of what it actually is for. Now the reason I wanted to make this video is because I post pictures sometimes with this and a lot of people ask me questions on what it's for and how and why and when to use it basically. So you see here in my right hand, I have the board that connects into the programmer box itself. There are connectors on that board ranging from the iPhone 7 model to the iPhone 10R model. There are different versions of these EEPROMs out there where they have the 11s included now. And on my specific device, I also have to have it plugged in to work. So there are other models where it, they have a standalone battery and you don't have to have them plugged in. You see me here taking a cracked iPhone XR screen and where it says there is a touch display screen connector, you're going to take your touch display screen connector on your XR screen and you're going to connect it in there onto the board of the EEPROM. And once you've done this, it should register onto the device with the serial information. And on my EEPROM programmer, I'm going to press this left blue button here to read the serial data off of this screen. And you see here it says now success, which means it has read this information. So we can go ahead and disconnect our iPhone XR screen from our EEPROM. And once we've done so, we want to just turn this off by switching the top lever. And now we can go ahead and take our brand new iPhone XR screen. Keep in mind that these do need to be of OEM grade quality in order to use the EEPROM. There are some EEPROM devices out there, I believe, that you can use to transfer the serial to aftermarket screens, but I'm not familiar with exactly which ones. So for this specific model, it does need to be an OEM screen that you are transferring the serial to. Once we have our EEPROM back turned on, we can go ahead and take the connectors from this new screen. And we're just going to do the same thing like we did before, plug it in on our EEPROM board. And you should notice both times that it automatically shows response on the EEPROM. So that's also a way to tell if you're using an aftermarket or an OEM screen. Keep in mind when you do this, it won't show any serial information, but I've tested this already with an 8 screen, which is why you see an iPhone 8 serial info there. But instantly as the right has success, you see that it transfers to the iPhone XR screen serial that we had connected before. And it's that simple. It just takes a quick minute. You can now disconnect it and transfer over your necessary small parts onto your new screen and connect it as you would like any other normal screen repair. The reason why you would want to get an EEPROM if you are going to have your own iPhone repair business is that on the iPhone 7 and newers, they are specific to the serials. So if you do replace the screen and you transfer the serial over, you're going to have less of a chance of glitches, of issues, the 3D Touch won't have any issue. And for your iPhone 8 and newer screens, you won't have issues with the ambient light sensor, which are known to stop working after screen replacements when you don't transfer the serial info over. I didn't show in this video, but there are also connectors for the Taptic Engine itself for the iPhone 7 through 10R models. So if you do have to replace the Taptic Engine on any of these phones, transferring the serial is another thing that you can do so that the 3D Touch doesn't lose functionality. My EEPROM even came with a case, which is great for mobile repair. So overall, what do you guys think? Do you want to get one? Do you have any questions? Like this video, leave me a comment, let me know what you'd like to see next time, and thanks so much for watching.